Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video will introduce an economic issue of topic three, inflation. Today we'll be focusing on how it's measured. But first of all, what is the definition of inflation? Inflation is the sustained increase of general prices in an economy. It is measured by comparing this year's prices compared to last year's. More specifically, it's calculated by this formula. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. It's an average of the prices of a basket of goods and services weighted according to their significance to the household budget. So this formula is comparing the difference between this year and last year's prices and expressing it as a percentage of last year's CPI. Let's try this out with 2014's HSC question 12. To answer this question, we need to figure out the inflation rate from 2012 to 2013 by inserting the given information into the formula. 2012 CPI was 150 and 2013's was 156. Putting this into the formula will give us an inflation rate of 4%. So the answer is B. The CPI is calculated by the Australian Bureau of Statistics and published once a quarter. From this figure, they'll calculate the headline rate of inflation. This measurement, however, is a bit flawed as it can be skewed by volatile or one-off price movements, such as changes in mortgage interest rates or natural disasters causing prices of bananas to increase. To take these into account, other measurements are used to indicate underlying inflation. These include trimmed mean, weighted median, and CPI excluding volatile items. Trimmed mean is the average rate of inflation after trimming away the items with the largest price changes. It's the weighted average of the middle 70% of items. Weighted median is the inflation rate of the CPI item at the middle of the price changes. CPI excluding volatile items is what the name suggests. It's the average inflation rate of all the items in the CPI basket except for fruit, vegetables, and fuel, because those are volatile items. Let's take a look at 2015's question 19. In this question, we're given headline and underlying inflation stats, and we must figure out which combination of scenarios would cause this to happen. A falling underlying inflation rate and rising in headline inflation suggests that prices are generally falling, but volatile or one-off events are causing certain items to increase in prices. Let's look at the right column first to see what can cause general prices to fall. Expansionary fiscal policy can cause demand poor inflation, so that's wrong. Microeconomic reform usually causes increased productivity and lower prices, so that could be right. Increasing minimum wage causes labor costs to be higher, leading to cost push inflation, so that's wrong. Appreciation of the domestic currency means that imports are cheaper, so imported inflation falls, so that could be right too. Now, let's look at the left-hand side for volatile items that have caused one-off increases in prices. Decreased oil production could cause higher oil prices. This could be right. Flooding would cause one-off increases in fruit prices. This could also be right. Increasing tariffs could cause a one-off increase in imports. So this could also be right. Increased oil production would cause lower oil prices. So this one is wrong. The only correct combo here is B. One more use of the CPI is to differentiate between nominal GDP and real GDP. Nominal GDP is the size of the economy measured by raw dollar value or by the current prices. The problem with this measurement is that it doesn't take into account any changes in price. Therefore, it's not a completely accurate representation of the output of an economy. For example, I can tell you that I doubled my income compared to last year. That sounds impressive, right? But if I tell you that prices in my economy also doubled, you realize that I'm not any more well off than before. That's why we also have another measurement called the real GDP, which takes into account inflation. We calculate this by dividing nominal GDP by the CPI. As you can imagine, the higher the rate of inflation and CPI, the lower the real GDP, because we're losing purchasing power with inflation. Let's try this out with the HSC question. 2015's question 18 requires us to first use aggregate demand to figure out GDP for each of the years. At first glance, the GDP has grown from 1000 to 1100, but that's the nominal GDP growth. The question is asking for the real GDP growth rate, so we need to adjust it for inflation. Year 1's real GDP is still 1000, but year 2's is now only 1000 as well. So there's been no real growth, and the answer is A. I hope my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to get into the topic of inflation. Next lesson, I will continue the series by looking at the types of inflation and their causes. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.